So a little bit about me. Um, as she said, I'm international. I graduated in 2021. Uh, initially, I tried to take a gap year so I can study for the MCAT and prep for the application cycle. As I already knew that the international students, it's really hard for us to get in. It's like 10 times harder. So I did take a gap year, uh, but I applied last year the la the last cycle and I didn't get in unfortunately so this cycle I had to change a few schools I had to change a few things and change my schools list and then I decided to apply again because this is really something that I want to do um, tons of people telling me to apply to PA school and P school but not yet I'm not at the point where I want to give up um, so here I am <laughs> Okay. So something about the application process everyone should know is the application process is a year long process. Uh, it's, it starts in May and it lasts until the, the following year. That's May, the following year, if you get in. If you don't get in, then you know you have to go through everything again. So that's something to keep in mind. Um, I hope, uh, can everyone see? I don't know if I can see y'all's comments. Is there a way to minimize? So for some reason, my whole like screen is showing and I can't see if any of you are typing anything. Let's see if I can leave it like this. Feel free to type. Um, if you have any questions, I'll try to look at it on the side. I'll try my best. Okay. Can everyone still see the 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 PowerPoint? Yes. Okay. Mm -hmm. Okay. Because I, I want to make sure I'm able to see their questions too if if they want to ask something while I'm talking. Um, okay. So the application process, as I said, it starts in May. Um, you want to start preparing your primary application, submit that in May, and by the end of June, it's transmitted to the schools that you actually, you know, put on your medical school list. Let's say you made a list of 20 schools. They'll all go to the schools. It's, it's a specific date in the end of June, and your school should start sending you secondary applications and all that, all that good stuff starts happening after June after July, August, it depends. And then if they like you from the secondary applications, let's say you're an applicant that they really want to explore or they want to see if, it, if you're the best fit for their school, they'll go ahead and send you interviews. Um, they'll invite you for interviews. So once you get in, you'll, you'll um, once you do the interviews, that's where they start deciding whether they want to put you on hold, whether they want to accept you or they want to reject you. But uh, for the most part, interviews start like in, you know, August onwards, I would say. But mostly I do see that it starts like in late October, January um some february so if you do submit your application and you're not like receiving interviews right away i would say just sit wait be patient uh, because this whole process is a year-long process so you really want to like be patient and don't feel like am i not good enough am i not what's going on and if you want if if you get interviews and you really want to go to that school you can always send letters of interest or you know just letting them know that you're still interested you still want to go to their school and all that good stuff but how do you know when to get started so this is a template um this this slide that i created it has a few questions that you need to really sit down and think about so how do you create an effective and personalized timeline uh, like for me, for example, I was able to decide that I cannot take the MCAT while I'm in undergrad. So I am going to take a gap year 
uh, take the AMCAD, get some clinical experience, and then have myself ready to apply the next cycle. So you, it's really a call of your own, uh, but a few questions to consider is when are you finishing undergrad? How many, um, are you gonna take any gap years or you wanna apply before you're done with undergrad? Um, or do you have enough clinical experience? Because most people uh, who have good MCAT scores and GPA, they, they really don't get in because they lack the clinical experience. Um, and then your GPA, is it too low? Is it too high? Um, you know, what is your GPA? Are you going to graduate with a high GPA? Do you need a master's program? Uh, do you need some time to, you know, like... Uh, put your classes in, in a timeline where you can do well, you need more time to study. So what I did for myself, and I'm gonna use myself as an example, so you, you can have um, estimate of how the timeline works. So I finished my undergrad in like three years, but I knew that with the classes that I'm taking, and also I used to work on the side as a pharmacy tech, uh, and then a few clinical experience here and there. With all the working and classes, I just knew that I was not going to be able to take the MCAT. So I sat down, made a decision, I need to take a gap year and I'll take the MCAT during the gap year and then have myself ready for the next cycle to apply. So yes, I graduated in 2021, that's May, but then I did not decide to apply right away in that May or the May before so I can get into medical school like right off undergrad. So I, I made a decision for myself. I took a gap year. I took the MCAT during that gap year. And then the year after is when I decided to apply. But unfortunately I did not get in. Uh, for international students, it is a really like a hit or miss situation. So you, you really don't like find out until you apply and you go through the process. But the only thing I can say is like, a very high percentage of applicants that get into medical school are reapplicants. So don't give up in your first cycle if you don't get in. I would say just try to fix your application, try to change uh, things that you know need to be changed, and then go ahead and apply again. Um, the MCAT, if, if your MCAT score is low, if your clinical experience is lacking, you can sit down and decide for yourself to take a gap year um, and then go from there. Um, so the next slide is about the MCAT. Uh, so when do you take the MCAT? Um, in my opinion, and this is just me from everything that I've seen, I would, I, I usually push um, students, pre-meds, um, whoever I talk to, uh, whoever I'm giving advice to, to take the MCAT a year before you wanna apply. So let's say you wanna apply next year in May. I would knock the MCAT out this year. And I wouldn't, I, I also, I see a few high schoolers and um, students trying to say that, oh, I'm gonna take the MCAT, but I'm gonna apply after like three years. Uh, that's not how it works because most schools want most recent MCAT scores. In fact, some schools don't even allow if your MCAT score is like two or three years, you know, older. Like if, if you check the MSAR and that's a website, I'm going to talk about that. But um, the MCAT has to be most recent. So I wouldn't like rush like, oh, I just got into high school. Let me start taking the MCAT because I want to be a doctor. I wouldn't really rush that. I would try to take the MCAT a year before I actually want to apply. So let's say I want to apply next May. I'm going to take the MCAT in this year. Just try to knock it out. They have dates starting from January until September. So it's, it's really upon you how long you want to study, what other things you have to do on the side while you study for the MCAT or, you know, how much time you want to dedicate it. But however much time you want to give to the MCAT, I recommend a three-phase um, study schedule. So in, in the three-phase study schedule, what you're going to do is 
let's say what well, I usually say that you should study for about six months because you know you want to avoid burnout um, this exam is like a marathon first of all so you really need to train yourself for it it's not a straightforward question answer exam it's a really like um, you know you have to dip in dive uh, dive and dip um, you have to get in really deep um, to study, practice, and to get the concepts. Like, yes, you might be knowing the concepts, but do you know how to apply the concepts? Do you know how to practice? Do you know how to um, answer questions based on um, the content review that you've done? So I usually suggest six months. And yes, if you're doing the MCAT a year before you're trying to apply, then you should have the six months. Let's say you started studying in January. I would take a date six uh, six months out and then it, let's say you approach the six month uh, date and you're still not doing well, you can always extend it. You have time until September. So in that way, you get your scores back in time. Uh, you will have the time to decide which schools apply to your scores and your GPA. Uh, I'm going to show you how to use the MSR to look for that. Uh, but if you have your scores back in advance, then you don't have to worry about come there, you want to apply, you don't have to worry about the MCAT. And then you can just concentrate on other things like your personal statement, your activities section, uh, your CASPER exam, your AMC preview exam. There's a lot of things that go into the application. It's not just about the MCAT. So with the MCAT, the three phase study schedule that I would use, let's say, let's say we are doing six months of study. Uh, I would I would divide the six months into three phases. That's two months for each phase. The first phase will be content review where let's say you have, like I use the Kaplan study books. Let's say you have the books. I would read the books and reinforce that information using Anki or flashcards that you would make. Let's say that you are running behind on some, a few topics. I would write those down. And as you can see behind me, I still have everything. I promised myself I'm not going to take anything off until I get into medical school. Let's say I need to take the MCAT again. So everything is still here. If you can see like any difficult topics, anything like I'll just write it down and content, do the content review, just try to review everything. Um, and then come the second phase, that is the month three and four, I would start using third party practice questions. Like there's a lot of free practice questions out there. And I do make, if you all, if you follow me on Instagram, you do know that I make a lot of videos about that. So you can catch up on that over there. Uh, like, let's say I got the self uh, study plan from Kaplan. I would do the Kaplan questions. I would do Jack Westin. I would do Princeton questions. There's a lot of free questions out there. I wouldn't touch the AMC uh, materials as of now, like the, the second phase. I would leave those questions for the end. Even the full length exams, I would leave them for the end. And I would come back to that on the end because by then, yes, I have a lot of concepts. I have a lot of practice. So I really want to test myself on the real questions because we all know that the MC is the one that makes the MCAT. So we really want to get first hands-on experience um, with the questions of made by the MC, which are actually going to be in the, not the same questions, but you, you get the style. Um, so after the second phase, I would go to the third phase. And that is where I will do the AMC practice questions. But one thing about this exam is you really need to practice. Knowing the content is not going to help you if you don't have practice. So I would sit myself and do full length exams. Like me, myself, I did like 16 full length exams before the actual exam. Because you're training yourself to sit down for about eight hours, I would say. Like, you know, from the moment you wake up, you need that energy, you need that mental strength. So I would really like try to um, sit down and do the exam as if it will be on the real test day. I would try to like do the, uh, you know, sit at home, say, take the breaks when I'm supposed to take, try to eat what I'm going to eat on the test day and try to make myself familiar with the exam and train my head to sit down and study for, you know, to, to, to take an exam for almost eight hours. So that is a very important thing. 
practicing is very, very important uh, for the MCAT. And you can use study techniques like active recall. What do I mean by active recall? Like doing Anki. Let's say you did, you studied a topic today, but are you going to remember that topic in like five days? So after like a few days, I would do like the Anki cards. There's there's also this um, MCAT, like King of the Curve app. I really like that one uh, for flashcards. And you can always make your own flashcards. If you know you're forgetting a certain topic, you, you can make your flashcards, leave it on the side, come back to it like five days later. And that's what we call active recall. Blurting uh, for like the biochemistry, uh, organic chemistry, like cycles, biocycles. I, I really like to blurt. Uh, so I will first learn the cycle, let's say it's glycolysis. I'll, st uh, I'll start by learning that cycle. And then um, after a few days or after a few hours, maybe when you're learning it for the first time, I'll start blurting. Blurting means you'll start writing it down. Let's and, and try to test how much you can remember uh, without actually looking at it. So that helps a lot. And then there's mnemonics. You you know, there's tons of mnemonics to uh, memorize the concept. Feynman's technique. Uh, you can basically try to teach others um, about your about the topics that you're not uh, remembering, and that will help reinforce um, in your long term memory. So those are a few techniques that you can use. And that's about the MCAT, unless you all have questions, how to study, what to do, how to make your study schedule, you will do that in three phases. And it's really a call of your own. Let's say you're working. Um, so if you're working, let's say you're working eight to three, then you need to sit down and make a schedule where, you know, you, you, you put some time aside to study. Let's say you're studying from three to five or three to six. Uh, so it's a really it's really you sitting down and making a schedule for yourself, but I would keep the three phases in mind. And it also depends if let's say you're studying for three months or two months or six months. Uh, so it's really your call, depending on what else you have to do. I know there's some people who like to study in the summer, like summer vacations. Let's say they have three months. But still, I, I really recommend using the three-phase study schedule. It really works. Because if you see, two-thirds of this is, is um, given to practice. So content review is just really one part of it. So, you know, you want to give two parts of it to, to practicing, practicing, and practicing. Uh, let's see what's next. How do you save money for the MCAT? Oh, I see a question. How often should you be studying a day if you're working full time? Right now, I'm planning to take it in March. So that is seven months away. What do you suggest? So... Working full time, I, I assume you're doing 40 hours a week or, you know, you're, you're working five days a week. Uh, so with the MCAT, it's really easy to fall behind, especially if you're working. Uh, I really recommend that you sit down and let's say you're working eight to five, for example. Uh, I would for the content review phase, I would really just, uh, you know, like the Kaplan, it had six books and each book has like 12 topics. So I would see the number of topics and how long it would take me to study. And if you you say, for example, your um, your exam is seven months away, let's say you give two months to content review. I would do like there's about 12 topics. I know those books so well. So I'll just say there's about 12 topics in each book. So you'll just do like um you'll just do some simple calculations. So 12 times six, that's 72. And let's say you have two months to study. So that's about 60 days divided by 60. So if you're, if you're to see it's 1.2 topic a day. Uh, so I would say, let's say two topics a day. So just try to keep a target of studying two topics a day and trying to get to know them like really well. And some of these topics are really easy. So let's say it's a heavy work day for you and you, ca you came back at home. Don't do something complicated like organic chemistry or like biochemistry. I would just go and do like a, 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 an easy topic from psych -soch. 
or an easy bio topic like let's say digestion. Um, I would just, you know, this is where you really need to sit down and plan on yourself. What days are you working on? Those days I'll have a light schedule. What days am I not working? And if you're not working, you're off and you want to study on your off days, which you really have to, because if you're working full days, your off days are really going to, going to have to be dedicated to MCAT study. So then on the off days, you're fresh, wake up, uh, you know, take your sleep, take your breakfast, and then start on the real uh, harder topics like organic chemistry, biochemistry. So it's a, it's really, a, you know, you need to sit down and make a schedule uh, by yourself. But then when you're making the schedule, you wanna, you, you obviously wanna incorporate a few practice like, like Anki, like let's say you did topics today, I see. Do you supplement with Anki and practice questions after you read? Yes, that's what I was coming to. So let's say you did two bio topics today. I would, I would like, that's what you call active recall. You might think that you remember everything, but when you start doing Anki, you will realize that, oh, I'm starting to forget stuff. So I would like, you know, what I personally used to do is once, once I was like, a few days into my content review and I knew that I've done a few topics, I would dedicate an hour to Anki every single day. Like I would just do any random topic, like, you know, like surprise yourself, like biochemistry or bio. And that's what's really going to help you know where your content gaps are. So I would like dedicate um, an hour to Anki every day and just do like randomized cards and see where my content gaps really are. So this helps you. And if if you fail a, a few like specific questions, this will help you. Okay, I don't know this about enzymes. I don't know this about uh, digestion. Let me go back and read. So this is how you will um, incorporate. So I also use the U world questions, but I do understand that it's a lot of you know money that goes into it. So if you're not into wasting a lot of money, um, you know, investing into materials, there's always tons of free like questions, free full length exams, and I do make a lot of videos about that. So make sure to check that out. Um, the Anki, the Miles Down deck, the Psych Source, the 300 page document, which was made by MCAT Bros. Um, Jack Westin has a lot of passages. Uh, the full length exams. I, I know I recently made a reel about this. Um, a lot of free, you know, full length exams. I, I also put a Google Drive together with, you know, all my free resources that I that I came across when I was studying and I put them together. Uh, so let me know if you need that. Uh, but no matter what you save your money on, make sure you get the AMC materials. You really, 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 yes, please share the link. Okay, I'll, I'll share the link um, before I leave today. Remind me. <laughs> um, so so I was, I was saying you can save money on everything else. Let's say you decide not to buy the Kaplan self-study, the blueprint or whatever. That's fine. You, you decide to practice using free materials, YouTube videos, everything is okay. But the AMC materials, the bundle, please, please, please get that. And that's what's going to be your third phase of study. You really need to practice firsthand materials from the company that's making the MCAT. So make sure, I, I would say don't even bother sitting for the MCAT if you didn't go through these questions. You really need to go, go through this so that you can learn the style um, and you know the, the format of the questions that the MCAT is. Yes, the third party, um, uh, companies, they try to uh, make questions similar to the MCAT, but I don't, I don't want you to miss out on the AMC materials because that is really, really important. Uh, the full length exams, I think now they have six. When I took it, there were five. So those, those are very important. Do the full length exams. I'll do one each weekend. Uh, I, I wouldn't do any on the weekend before my exam because that will just overwhelm you. But I would do one each weekend on like your second, um, I'm sorry, your last phase of study just to see. And most probably the score that you get in the, in the practice exams is the score that you will be getting on the real um, MCAT. 
So you really want to, and it's also going to help you see if you're ready for the exam or not. So you really want to do those. They have a lot of cars, passages, bundles. And, and now for the cars, uh, I wouldn't like, I know so many like self-study plans have like books and stuff for cars, but I really wouldn't waste my time on that. Uh, because there's a lot they make you do but with cars it's really your call it's it's really a trial and error like cars is really complicated because there are like what nine passages in 90 minutes so technically you have to do one passage in 10 minutes which sometimes it's not possible so it's really a trial and error like you know you need to really practice you really need to find your style some people like to read the questions before they read the passage some people will skim through the passage read the questions, come back and read the passage in details and then answer the questions. Some people will like, you know, really read the passage in details and then just dive into the questions. But uh, what I discovered, it's like, it's different for everybody. It's not going to be the same technique. One, one technique used by another person is not going to be, and if it's not working for you, it's not that, oh, I'm not bright or I'm not understanding yeah. cars. I'm not being able to do yeah. this and that. It's, it's never yeah. going to be like that. Um, you really yeah. need to find your style by yourself. You really need to practice. And this is what I mean. So what I used to do with the cars, obviously this was my, my weakest section. So what I used to do with cars is I in the first phase, I would just freely do passages. I wouldn't time myself. I would let myself understand the style of these passages. Uh, just, you know, freestyle, just keep doing, take your time. I would do like three passages a day. Uh, but you know, that would help me get used to them because it's really, you know, it's also really demotivating because you will fail a lot, a lot of questions and it will make you feel like, okay, let me leave it till the end. I don't feel like doing this. Let me wait for the MCAT and I'll do it then. But um, this section really needs practice. So you really want to start ahead. You want to you wanna take it as serious as the other questions um, in order for you to, you know, get there. Um, and then the second phase is where I would start timing myself on the passages. Okay, can I start doing a passage in 10 minutes? Let me try. If you can't, it's it's okay. That's the whole point of the exercise, right? Uh, but I would start timing myself. And then come the third phase is when I would start doing like full length cars exams. Like I would just, like Jack Westin helped me a lot. So I would go to Jack Westin, choose like nine random passages, and I would just set myself my timer for 90 minutes and go ahead and do it. Because the only way to learn is to go ahead and practice and do it. So th in that way, it's like you're training for a marathon. So you'll in that way, you get used to it. So you really don't want to sit on the car section until the end. Um, you really want to start before. Like that was one thing. I see a question. What are some tips or recommendations for retaking the MCAT? Is there a breakdown on your scores and where you did uh, poorly? Yes. So retaking the MCAT. Thankfully, I haven't had to do that. I see another. I have a full set of 2015 and full set of 2018. So for the books, honestly, I don't care what version it is because you might be reading the latest uh, version of books, but you will still not do good if you don't have practice. So I really don't care what the version of the books is because the information is all the same, unless there is really like misleading information or they really made mistakes in content. But I would, you have the 2015, 2018 books, go ahead and use those. I don't, I don't not recommend wasting money buying the latest versions because the most, um, you know, work that you will do is during the practice. And then coming back to Jani's question, um, tips, recommendation for retaking the MCAT. Now, retaking the MCAT is really a call of yourself. You need to sit down and ask yourself, um, in, in my eyes, if you really deep dive and um, and use the study, the, the three phase 
uh, study plan that I gave you, there is no way that, you know, you will not get a, like, you know, a goal, the, the goal that you set for yourself, let's say you want a 510 or you want a 508 or you want a 510 plus. Uh, so you really need to sit down and be honest with yourself when you're retaking the MCAT. Where did I go wrong? Did I practice enough? Did I, uh, you know, not do the AMC materials? So I'll be real honest, like, in the beginning, because when I came, nobody like, so I was new because of being an international student, I really didn't have exposure to all of this until I joined Instagram. And I saw like, you know, asked a few people around. But when I initially I started studying for the MCAT, I was not planning to take the AMC materials. I was not planning to do those questions. But then I realized how important those are. So you really need to ask yourself, did you go through the whole bundle of the AMC questions? You Some people do it twice if they have time. Let's say you have more than six months, they'll do that twice because those questions are the real questions that are gonna show you everything. So did you do that? Did you dedicate enough time to your studying? So I I know that you know a few websites say that you need to uh, to dedicate like 300 or 350 hours to MCAT studying but I would not really you know dwell on that because everybody is different everybody's um minds are different so you really want to like you know go and sit by sit down by yourself and see if you need more time to study than others then go for it you don't you don't really have to you know feel like no somebody else took only three months you know why why should I have to take six months and that is why I really dwell on taking knocking the MCAT out before the actual year that you need to apply because in the actual year that that you need to apply you're going to do a lot of things you'll do the personal statement you'll do the casper amc preview you don't really want to mix the mcat with that so that's the these are my tips for retaking the mcat i would say I'll allocate enough time uh you know sit down and see where you were lacking you know practicing i would really like practice practice and practice that's the only way to study for this exam and that's why i was like if you have the old kaplan books that's fine go ahead and use them because the content is still the same the the core topics that are tasted those are not going to change but the thing is do you know the content enough to answer your questions to answer the questions that they're going to ask so that that is the only way to find out, um, you know, you can uh, practice and see. And then is there a breakdown on your scores and where you did poorly? Yes, um, I don't really remember the whole breakdown uh, of my scores because I took it back in 2022. But of course, I did very poorly on the not I wouldn't say very poorly, but there was a significant difference on my car section, because as I said, I left it till the end. I was like, I, I used to do it. Don't get me wrong, but I used to like really. So so with cars, it's also a mind game. You really want to I used to like just I just hated it I was like oh no I don't even like to see this this section so you know this is where I'll sit down and be honest with myself why did I get um why was cars my lowest section because you know let's let's just be honest I didn't pay that much attention as I did in the other sections so I really go I really I got a 96th percentile in the chemistry section I think I got a 80 86 or 88 percentile in the in the bio section and I and I did really good in the psych source but the cars was like my worst so why did I why did I you know get the worst in the cars because obviously I ignored it I didn't like I was just not feeling it but the way to do the cars passages is like you know just read them as if they're the most interesting things you're reading in life or, you know, it's the most uh, beautiful story you're thinking about, you know, it's, it's the mindset, you really want to prepare your mind for the cars. So, you know, that you can only do if you start early. So that's, that is one of the mistakes that I did. Uh, but I did end up getting a 513 MCAT score which I was pretty happy with, but the cars section, because, you know, they say that, you know, you really need to put your 
you you really need to get scores that are really like you know aligning with each other like like that's what they 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 say that there shouldn't be a huge remarkable difference between you know the sections but for me yes it was the cars but I don't know hopefully they'll understand that you know <laughs> I'm international and all that stuff I mean I can explain it but you know there's really no explanation for not doing good in the English you know part it is what it is so I did not um, decide to take the retake the MCAT because I thought that score is enough for me for now. Yes, if I don't get accepted in this cycle, then I do need to take the MCAT for the next cycle. Let's say it happens again. I didn't get accepted last time and I'm getting I'm not getting accepted this time and and for the next cycle. Yes, I do need to retake the MCAT because, as I said, the, the schools, they want most recent scores. And mine will be what, three years old. So I do need to retake it if I do not get accepted this time. So that's why I tell you don't rush with the MCAT, just do it a year before you're trying to apply. So at least your score is valid for a good two or three years. And that would help. Um, let's talk about saving the money. Uh, the fee assistance program, that's a must. I would. I would say this is like the best thing that happened to me, you know, as an international student, I paid out of state tuition for um, undergrad and all that stuff. But this, it helped me save like, you know, we're looking at about three to $4,000. So you really want to uh, apply for the fee assistance program. It really depends on the income, on your income, if you're old enough. I think 26 is the age. Um, Y'all need to check on the website. But if you're under 26, then they'll ask for your parents' income. But it helps a lot. You can apply to 20 schools for free. And for most part of it, the secondary application fee is also waived. So that helps a lot. You get the AMC, the prep materials that I'm talking about for free. And then a two-year subscription of MSAR. Now, MSAR is the tool which is, you know, your best friend. You really want to check the MSAR for, you know, it shows you everything, all the schools, what the schools require. Uh, let me see, does that apply for if you're only applying to DO schools? No, this uh, this whole presentation is for MD schools. Uh, I know there's DO schools, but I, I really did not put that into account because I did not apply to DO schools. I decided not to apply. So I really didn't want to talk about something that I haven't been through. But this fee assistance program, uh, it's it's for the MD schools. I know DO schools has it too, but it's really hard because they have very limited uh, chances where they grant. But the fee assistance program for the MD schools, they really grant you based on your income. So you really want to try that. Um, so as I was saying, the MSAR. recorded session okay so as i was saying the msar uh it's it's the tool that if you if you do msar.com or you'll you can go under the, the tools that are provided by the amc uh, all the schools are there in the msar it'll show you everything who receives secondaries how many it'll show you also the data of each school so this is where you want to see if a school is accepting um out of state you know uh, students or in-state students or international students uh, or if they require permanent residence, they require citizenship, what kind of interviews they have, you know, is it is it like um, you have to go in person or do you have to do it online? What kind of exams do they require? The, the CASPER and the AMC preview exams. Not all schools require it, but yes, it is. And, and I do have a slide on that, so I'll show you. Uh, but the MSAR is where you get all the information. Your it You can adjust your GPA. Let's say your GPA was 3.9 and your MCAT was 510 you'll put the stats in there and it will show you which schools you can apply to so you really want to take advantage of the msr to make a medical school list and see where you want to apply 
I know there are some people who stick to the um to the schools in their own state, but if you're like me and you and you wanna, especially if you got the fee assistance program, you really wanna take advantage of it. You wanna apply to twenty schools because why not? It's free, right? So you can make your medical school list using the MSR. Uh, that really helps, and then you get fifty percent off you know, the price of the MCAT, the MCAT is what, 300, $330. So you'll pay half of that. And as far as when I applied the Casper and AMC, you know, you know, preview exams were free if you had the fee assistance program. Uh, does the fee assistance program also apply for Canadian students and Canadian med schools? Oh, I'm not really sure. You have to check on their website. I'm sure they have it in the FAQs. That's something I have to find out, find out about. But I'm not really sure if it applies to Canadian schools, but I think it should. Okay, so if you're planning to take the MCAT next summer, when should I apply for the fee assistance program? So if you apply for the fee assistance program this year, you should be, so you say next summer. So I don't think the, the MCAT dates for the next summer are open yet. So regardless, even if you get approved for it, you really can't. Um, I think they open in October or something. But yes, if you do, if if the dates are open, you can go ahead and register if you have the fee assistance program this year. Or you can wait till January and then do it um, in that year and then get a date in January. But it really depends uh, when the dates open. But I think you should be able to do that. Uh, let's see. The Casper and the MC preview um, exams. So unfortunately, MCAT is not the only exam that you need, uh, especially based on the schools that you that you you know you've decided to apply. Uh, some schools really want the Casper and AMC preview exams to make their decision. Uh, now these exams are not like um, the MCAT, you know, content based. They're situation based exams. So basically, you'll be presented with situations, and you will. Uh, you know, make a decision based on what you would do. And this is how your core competencies are, you know, they're, they're tested. So basically, they'll present you with a situation that, you know, um, if this happened or that happened, what would you do in this case? So there's no really like practice or, you know, th that it's just your thought process. They want to see how you think. Can you think like a doctor? But also the, the AMC preview has practice exams, which you can do. And for the Casper, yes, Casper also has practice exams. And then what I used to do is I would just watch YouTube videos and all that um, good stuff so that I can get ready for this e e exam. Um, which schools require these exams? As I said, you'll find all that information on the MSAR. And for example, I'm in Georgia and I applied to all Georgia schools. And I know that, uh, for example, Mercer, they, re they require the AMC preview. I saw that in the MSAR. And also, if you, if you know you're going to apply to the schools, you have to do research on their, the websites of the schools. And the, the websites should have all this information. I know there are so many schools that don't require any of these exams. But let's say you're applying to 20 schools. So there's, there's a, you know, a huge chance that you're applying to schools that require this exam exams. So you really want to just knock them out of the way. So this is what you will be doing on the year that you actually apply. So how much does preview affect your application? So it really de depends on the school, as I said. The schools, the websites have their the information. So I know there are some schools that recommend you to do it, but it's not a must. Uh, some schools really want you to do it. You won't even get an interview without this. So you want to just find out. You want to see. It depends on the schools that you're applying to, and they'll tell you the information about this. So this you this is this is part of the the things you know one of the things that you need to do on the year that you're applying. So that's why I tell you to knock the MCAT out so that you can concentrate on all this stuff on the in the year that you're actually planning to apply. Uh, secondary applications. So this is another thing that you'll be doing in the year that you apply. 
what is considered a low GPA for an international student? So I really can't answer this question because um, it really depends on the schools you want to apply. Let's say you want to apply to Ivy League schools or you want to apply to like really, you know, research, heavy research based schools or you or you just want to apply to like schools in your state, you know, so it really depends on the schools that, that that's why I say that you really need to do your research if you want to apply to specific schools go to their websites, find out use the MSR and see what stats they, uh, you know, what students, what stats um, of the students that were accepted uh, and just do that. So this is where you research. And if you know that, you know, you want to apply to um, a, a specific school, let's say you want to apply to, I'll just give an example of one of the schools. Let's say I want to apply to, you know, Medical College of Augusta, of, of Georgia in Augusta. So I would go and see the stats. Uh, the average stats, I think, of the students that were accepted, the Stamcat score was 513, and the GPA was 3.8 you know, or 3.7. And then if you scroll down, it will also, also show you the stats of student, other students that were accepted that were not within the range. So that's how you find out your range. So And then that's how you decide. But for the GP, I would say anything below 3.5, 3.3, 3.2. I know that most students do, you know, try to take the master's program to bring their GPA up if it's really low. Uh, so it's really your call. Do you want to apply with that GPA or do you want to go to schools that have that require a higher GPA? Same for the MCAT. Uh, a 505 or 508, 503. I, I would say any MCAT score works, but it depends on your on the schools you want to apply to. Now, you can't tell me you want to apply to Harvard and you have a 500 MCAT score, you know? So it's really a call of your schools which you want to apply to because I know some people have specific schools that they really want to go to. Let's say you're not an international student, but because for me, the situation at this point is, I'll just go wherever I get in because that's that's the point where I am at. Let's say you're not international and you really want to go to a school that's in your state. You don't want to go away from your house or you want to or you want to stay close to home. You want to do research on the stats of that school. Does it need research? Um, does it need um, a person who is it a research um, heavy school? Like I know, like, for example, um, Kiss Western Boston, those are research heavy schools. So do you have enough research to show clinical experience and research experience to apply to schools like that? I'm not saying that you cannot, um, I'm not saying that you really need research to get into medical schools. You know, COVID happened, a lot of things happened. You, you probably don't have that on your application. So then don't apply to the research heavy schools, you know, you can apply to other schools. So you really want to make a medical school list, which is well balanced. You really want to make sure that you have all types of schools, just so if you miss the high, you know, research schools, at least you get into something else that you're really interested in. And that's the whole point of applying to 20 schools. So let me see, did you have to retake preview and Casper when you reapplied? So Casper, yes, Casper is every year. No matter you know what score you get, you got the last cycle. They want you to do it every year. Now the AMC preview, it's not a must. It's your call. Uh, do you want to do the exam again, and get a better score? Then yes, go ahead and do it. If not, I think it's valid for. Uh, it's the same way as the MCAT. Uh, can we retake the Casper exams if we don't pass it the first time and we should take them before submitting the primary applications, right? Yes, I, for the Casper, I would, I would follow the same timeline as I follow for the secondary applications. Now you need to keep in mind that uh, it takes like, for the Casper it takes like three to two to three weeks for your score to get back. So you know, I would do it around the same times I'm responding to secondary applications or even before. I, I'm not sure when the dates are, but, you know, a student like me, I've always wanted to do, you know, things, you know, 
as soon as they open. Like I would, I would see the dates whenever the first date is, I would go ahead and knock it out. So that would be the best. But if let's say for some reason you're running behind, I would try to do it at least around the time when your secondary applications are going out because the Casper for the schools that need it, they really use that information to see if they want to invite you for interviews or they do not want to, you know, you know, you don't stand, you don't have the same core competencies that they really want. So for the Casper and the MC preview, now the MC preview, the, the score comes back after four weeks. So you really need to keep that in mind as well. Uh, so you have to plan accordingly. Uh, how many schools did you apply to? So the last time I applied to, let's see, 24 or 25 schools. But then um, this year, I since I didn't get in last year, and you know, it's a lot of money that goes into it. This year, I stuck to my 20 schools. And I was like, if it if you know, if it's gonna happen, it's gonna happen within the 20 schools that you know, are free with the free uh, fee assistance program. If not, then it, it is what it is. I did not really feel like wasting money, you know, adding more schools than my limit. So it's really a call of your own. Uh, let's see, do medical schools prefer certain types of research opportunities over others? For example, do medical schools prefer wet lab research experience over clinical research experience? To be real honest, um, any kind of research experience or any other experience you have, you really should know how to describe it, or you really should know how to write your story, tell your story, and make sure you wanna show them that you really know what you're talking about. So let's say it's a wet lab research or it's a clinical research experience. You really wanna show them that you know what you're talking about. Uh, you know, with the research. Now with the, re the, the heavy research-based schools, it should have it in their website, what they really want. Let's say you wanna go to a specific school, you should go there and check what they really want and try to get that kind of research. But it, at the end of the day, even if you have the research, it all comes down to how you tell your story, how you write your essays, in your activities section, in your secondary applications. Uh, so the heavy research-based schools will always have prompts for research. Uh, they'll have questions asking about research. So you really need to know how to write your story. And I'll be coming to that. Um, I think it's the, the next slide, I think. But you really need to show and not just tell. You need to show them that you really know what you're talking about. Uh, I'm, I'm coming to that soon. But for the secondary applications, let me just finish this and I'll talk uh, and I'll, you know, come back to the questions in the chat. Um, so for the secondary applications, it's best to pre-write. So this is what I mean by the year you are starting to apply. So this is the timeline. Uh, in January and also the personal statement, I wouldn't rush to write the personal statement like, the year I went to high school or the year I started undergrad, because you're going to learn a lot. You are going to change a lot. And what I mean by change a lot, you are going to have new experiences that you want to include in your personal statement and you want to tell the medical schools about, you know, I'm not saying you have to show off, but you really need to show who you are so they know who you are. Uh, so the personal statement, I would start writing it on the year that I'm planning to apply, I would start writing it in January and finalize it by May, by when my application is, you know, ready to submit. So that is the time frame when I'll, and that's, that's what, uh, that's the personal statement that's going to speak best of your abilities and your recent experiences. Because if you write it way ahead of that, you're going to leave a lot of things which you know, you know, because you're still learning, you're still growing as a person, you really don't want to rush the personal statement. Um, so those are the things you need to do. Once you submit the application, or, or let's say you have time from January to, to May, what are you doing? You, you have to start writing your secondary applications, uh, pre-writing them. You know, there are so many websites online that have the questions. For most schools, the questions are always the same every year. So you can just Google it and start writing. Common prompts are, you know, diversity. How will you bring diversity to the schools? Uh, you know, effect of COVID, why the school? 
uh, or, or some questions in the chat will be rounding up in about three minutes. So if you do not get to, to your questions today, we'll work with Maitri to schedule a follow-up webinar. Okay, thank you. I know it's a lot to talk about, you know, because application process is really um, intense. So how to gain clinical experience? I, I do make videos about that too. And I think I've been talking about it, how to become a certified medical assistant. As Janice said, you can do the you know online course, get certified, get your hours. Uh, and, and that's basically how you get the clinical experience. And this I would do while I'm in undergrad or when I take a gap year or even in high school, you can start shadowing, you can start volunteering research, you know, you can do that in undergrad, you can get jobs in your gap year. Uh, let's see. So I'm coming to the essays. I see how did you show not tell. So when writing your essays, um, you know, you want to show and not just tell you, you really want to describe your activities. Like, I'll just give a quick example, you know, we're short of time. Um, so, so yeah, that was my last slide anyway. So for a quick example, let's say I'm talking about my work as a certified medical assistant. So everybody knows what a medical assistant does. So I'm not going to waste my characters talking about, oh, I used to draw blood. I used to do EKGs. I used to do this and that. No. So I'm not going to just tell them what I used to do and what you, you know my duties were because everybody knows that. But instead to show my qualities, I would, for example, this is a story that I used in my uh, activities section. I, I, I described a time when I actually dealt with a patient who was, you know, having low, low SATs and uh, low pulse. So let's say that, you know, he had to go to the ER and I used that, you know, description to show them that I dealt with, um, I dealt with a situation that was intense. It required me to work under pressure and it required me to work fast. So I would give actual examples. Like when I was working with Mr. John, uh, this, this and this happened. And then this is how I dealt with the situation, you know, uh, and this is what I learned from this situation. So I was dealing with, a, with an emergency situation. So I described the emergency situation and what I did. So this will show, like you wanna, you wanna give actual like anecdotes, like examples, you wanna show them how you worked under pressure. So I made a whole, I, I wrote it in a way, I made a whole essay of how I dealt with pressure and how I you know, was able to help the patient get to the emergency room. And, and this is how you show, you really wanna give examples like if like you know when I put um content creation let, let's say I put that as activity I I had to really like like this presentation that I'm doing I'm not just gonna say that I help students you know I showed them the path to merit like you know to help them show them the process of the application I I wouldn't just say that I would for example I would talk about this webinar I hosted a webinar where, uh, you know, I had like 41 students, you know, I was helping them, I was talking to them, showing them the process. So you really want to show them what you did, like in the research lab as well, or, or research experience. I can help you with that more, like just, just stay in touch with me on Instagram. I know we don't have time, uh, but you know, you read, I, and I also do offer personal statement editing and activities editing and all that stuff where I'll really show you deep dive um, and I'll show you everything, um, how I, how I edit to make it look, to, to make it look like, you know, you're showing us and you're not just telling us that, oh, I'm helpful. Oh, I'm good at teamwork. How are you good at teamwork? Like show us how many people did you work with? For example, I work with five providers. So I mentioned that. So it will it definitely show that, oh, she works, she's a medical assistant working for five providers. That just shows that she's she's good. She's um, you know, good in teamwork. She she can work with other people as well, and she's adjusting. So you really want to show those qualities without saying that, oh, I'm good at teamwork, I work with five providers. So I, I guess you understand um, the idea of what I'm trying to say. I know there's a lot of questions in the chat, but do we have time, Jenny? What, what are we doing? 
Um, so it's 703. I want to be respectful of people who have to jump off the call so we can end here today. But I do want to say thank you so much, Maitre, for all your valuable tips and expertise that you have shared. And for folks on the call who are um, considering taking the clinical medical assistant certification program, I will put the link to the chat to check it out with advanced clinical training. And if you are interested in enrolling, feel free to use the discount code webinar 400 at checkout for a $400 discount. Also be on the lookout for the link to this session's recording either today or tomorrow. It'll also include um, the, uh, the discount code as well. It is no caps. It is all just regular or lowercase um, numbers. So if you have any questions, feel free to reach out to me at info at advancedclinical.org. I'll put that in the chat as well. And we look forward to hopefully seeing you all at the next webinar. Thank you so much. And this is